If you have your Bibles with you tonight, we'd ask you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in the very first verse, the Bible says, Paul writing to the church at Corinth the second time, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of, tr of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and it shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'd like to preach, the Lord be my helper tonight, on the thought, casting a light in dark places. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and grace, Lord, and uh, for the provision of health that we might be here tonight. Lord, we thank you for the traveling mercy that brought us this way, Lord, that uh, we were uh, able to be here. Lord, we thank you for the safe travel you've given Sister Brittany and the boys back home here. We give you praise for that. We pray for Brother Ashley tonight there in the home that even in that place that he uh, might sense your presence and he might know that you're there with him. Lord, tonight we pray that you would give us as we can receive it. Lord, allow us to preach as you preach it unto us, Lord, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise for it. Lord, it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now here we uh, find Paul again writing the second time to, to the Corinthian church, and what he really addresses is darkness. Uh, what he really addresses is the lack of light. And today we live in a day that is very, very dark. Uh, we are not without religion, but in many cases we're without light. And until you've been born again, you really can't tell the difference. But I will say this in getting started. I, I dare say that many today have religion, but they lack redemption. They, they know about God, but they do not know God. And if you find yourself in that case, uh, I'm warning you, uh, at least be honest with yourself and ask for prayer. Uh, be honest with yourself and seek out help. Uh, the first verse, Therefore, see, we have this ministry. Now, without going too deeply into that verse, I want you to know this. If you are saved, you have ministry. Ladies, you have your children, you have your husbands, you have the people in the grocery line, men, you have your folks that you work with on a daily basis. Uh, if you're a preacher, you have your preaching ministry to tend to. Every minute of every day, you're working in your ministry whether you know it or not. Now, you may be hindering it to a large part, but you are doing something in it on a daily basis. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, meaning the preaching ministry, meaning the writing of the letters, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Now, I also want you to see the fact that he was able to continue. He says, we faint not, hinged on the mercy of God. Uh, you know what keeps you here tonight is the mercy of God. That you, you know what gives you the strength to get here is the mercy of God. You know what may give you smooth travel to the house of God tonight? The mercy of God. And if we could see that, we would be more gratified and be more happy to come to the house of God. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Now I want you to see that the first hidden thing that Paul mentions is dishonesty. A lie. Something that's not true. That's the very first thing he mentions. Now, let me say this. You can lie to me, and you can lie to mom and daddy, and you can even lie to yourself. But you cannot lie to God. He knows all things. 
So the first thing that he says, well, one issue you have, one thing that's going on is this dishonesty. So it would be helpful tonight if God would send the Holy Spirit down and we could just be honest if nothing else. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Now, I was trying to really get my mind and my heart around why did he put this word craftiness in this spot? Well, craftiness is when you try to fool someone. And you know what? This is the sad part. I see as many trying to fool people into the, the being saved as fooling them with the way of salvation. You know what? I can save nobody. All I can do is point to the sinless Son of God. And that's all we can do. But to do anything more is crafty, isn't it? Uh, to fill up this building because we have a uh, one of those things outside, that balloon thing you hop in. That's crafty, ain't it? You can get people here. You can, you can fill up the building. But it is not what saves souls. It's craftiness going on around us, all the way around us. And we need to understand that there are fruits of craftiness. You may fill up a building, but they will not have a mind of God. The rest of that verse, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of truth, condemning, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yeah. Now, and did the Lord save my soul, the gospel made no possible sense to me whatsoever. Now, I'll tell you a gospel that does make sense to a lot of people. Just say this prayer and things are going to be good. That makes sense right up here, but it, it, it doesn't line up with this right here. The good news that the Lord Jesus Christ came in the form of a man, bled and died and gave himself and rose again on the third day, that's good news. And only the Lord can make you understand that. Only the Lord can open your eyes. So if you have anything less than that, I would look at myself real carefully because you don't need to be deceived. You don't need to be pulled in and, 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 and leave this place on your way to hell. We do not need to do we do not need to do that. So I want you to see the first thing is this the gospel can be hid. It can be obscured. It can be difficult to see. And many times it is. Verse 4. For we are in this tabernacle. I'm sorry. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should not shine upon them. Now I want you to see he makes it very clear the, the oppressor, the God of this world, has blinded many, many people. Now, uh, when I say that, listen to me carefully, those of you that claim to be redeemed, be sure you're not blinded. Be certain that you haven't been slipped to counterfeit. Be, be very, very cautious that you know that you know that you know. Think back to that time tonight and see what you really have. What was that man preaching concerning the things of God? What, what was he showing you as the means of salvation? It, it's a very important task. And you know what I found? The redeemed don't mind doing it, but the lost don't like it. And so what we, what we need to do is just evaluate ourselves tonight with the help of the Holy Ghost and the, that the Holy Spirit might show us exactly where we stand uh, in the person of Christ. Verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, for your, and, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light... To shine out of darkness. Now, do something a little bit different. I want everybody to close their eyes. Everybody in the village. Justin. Everybody in the building. How many, how many fingers do I have up? Alright, you open up. How many, how many fingers did I raise? No one can tell me because you had your eyes shut. Had it five fingers. Now, it is hid. It is 
hid to many people. You know why they can't see the gospel? It's because the Lord has never opened their eyes. Just as surely as you didn't know how many fingers I, up, I had up, most people don't understand the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Far too simplistic for them. And then on the other hand, it's out of their reach and they know it. Salvation is out of our reach, whether we want to, want to accept that or not, because God has to bring it to you, not the other way around. And, and so we find, we find then that Paul is reminding the church at Corinth that they were in a blinded situation. For God, who commanded the light, of, the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So he turns the lights on and you begin to see. You know what? I wouldn't trust anything in the light of salvation if I didn't see my inability first. If you think you did something, if you think you conjured something up, you be careful. And I'll say more than that. And also this, if somebody talked you into something, you be very, very wary. You be sure that you see through the eyes of God and not see through, see through the eyes of man. I tell you what, hell was a very big reality one day. You better know that you're going to face it the right way. So how can we know? What, what do we know? Uh, how can we learn this? Well, first of all, let me say this. Two things. This book and the Holy Ghost. Or the Holy Spirit. You know, Baptists are almost afraid to say Holy Ghost, although it is used as much or more than the Holy Spirit. But what you need is this book and the Holy Spirit, and you can learn whether you're lost or saved if the Holy Spirit shows up. Now, you think again back to the night, whatever, the day, the night, whenever you are claiming to be saved, and what were you moved by? A lot of people today are moved nothing more than fear of hell. And you know what? That will not redeem a soul. That's the only thing that moves them. You don't want to go to hell, do you? Well, how foolish. You would say, yeah, that'd be great. You know what? That, that's a very carnal attitude of salvation. What I want to know tonight is, has He spoke life to you? Uh, when when uh, Mary uh, was there in the garden, he, she didn't know who He was until He said Mary. And when He said Mary, she knew who had said that until then she didn't know Him. She knew about Jesus. She had spent time with Jesus. But in the resurrection, she did not know Him until He called her by name. That's salvation. That, 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 that is redemption. It's nothing that we can conjure up or nothing that we control can control, but rather it is completely a, a work of the Lord. Now, if you will, go with me just a little further back to 1 Corinthians. Paul, again, writing to the church of Corinth the first time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 13. 1 Corinthians 2 in verse 13. Uh, Paul writes saying, Which things also we speak not, which things also we speak not in the not in the world's, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, did you get that? Again, we see that reactive agent in there, the Holy Ghost, and we have to have that com comparing spiritual to spiritual. So did you have a fleshly encounter, or did you have a spiritual encounter? Did you go through what somebody told you to do? Did you do what, say what somebody wanted you to say, or did you meet God? Compare spiritual to spiritual. We, we, can't, we can't go by this intellect. You know, uh, I, I, I can tell you about the time the Lord saved me. Sometime in June of 1981. But you know what? If I get so demented one day, I can't remember that. What I will remember is the work of grace He did in my heart. See, there's a huge difference to that. You know what reminds me of June 1981? Is this head. I, I, just, I don't even know the day, but I know... That was the month they had the vacation Bible school and the Lord saved my soul. 
But what, I, what I'm asking is this. Do you have something more than that? Do you have something that, that, that where He spoke life to you? And today we live in a day and age where, where that, is, uh, <laughs> that is not necessarily what people want to hear. Uh, verse, uh, excuse me, verse 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness. To him. Now, if you underline in your Bible and if you mark it in red, don't you do that to this one, that the, uh, the natural man understandeth not the things of God. So don't go by what someone told you or even what you think. You know why? Because that's a natural thing out between your ears. It's just brain tissue. That's all you have. So you better use spiritual knowledge. You better know something beside, you know, when did He speak to you? When did He convict you of your sin? When, when, when did He begin to finger about your heart and say, listen, you're desperately in need of help. And if you don't have that, something is desperately wrong. We, we need to be mindful of these things. Now, we're going to read a couple of characters in the Bible uh, very quickly. And, and it will show you, hopefully, a couple of things uh, that we can remember about this. Go with me uh, Acts chapter 16. I've read this in your theory many, many times over the years. Probably one of my most favorite verses. Acts 14, I mean, excuse me, Acts 16, verse 14. Acts 16 and verse 14, the Bible says, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, her, whose heart heard us, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. Now that was redemption for Lydia. Now, what do we have to automatically assume about Lydia if her heart was just then opened? Prior to, it had to be what? Closed. Right? That's the only thing you can come up with. Her, and what is it? So, now in knowing that her heart was closed, she did not know God. It had never been opened. What was she doing just before that? Worshipping. So that makes me wary that I could be down here in the house of God singing praises to the best of my knowledge and my heart dead closed. That's what she did, was it not? She was singing, she was worshiping and said that then her heart was open. So you think about what you have and has your heart ever been opened? Because when it's open, there's no doubt. Uh, the, the first thing when the Lord opened my heart, I saw myself as I was and I was disgusted by myself. And, and, and anything less than that, I would make my calling and election sure. Look at me back in Isaiah. And I'll say this concerning the Old Testament. The Lord is always saved in the same way. He's always saved by speaking life. It was in that day the sacrifice was incomplete. And now it is complete in the name of Jesus that's the only real difference is uh, Isaiah chapter 6 in the very first verse, very familiar verses of scripture. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train fell in the temple. Now, what do we see? We see that Lydia's heart was open. And we find here, one or two things happen. Isaiah was lost before this, or he was very, very backslid. One of the two. And he says here, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Now, you know what? Today, most believers do not behave as though they see him high and lifted up. And you know why? That puts us down here for him to be high and lifted up, does it not? And you know what the problem is? We don't like it down here. 
You know what? We are under His authority and command and far beneath the person of the Lord God. And we just don't like it. You know why America is in the shape she's in? Pride. Any problem you can relate back to, it's the pride of America that has brought us to our knees. So we see then that uh, we find that Isaiah had to see God high and lifted up. He had to see him better than he was. He had to see him sovereign. He had to see him completely lifted above all things. He had to see him in that way. Then he got a glimpse of self in verse 5. And then said I, woe is me, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is. It's the reaction and, and the events and, and the, and the events that happened in his life. He finally saw himself and says, whoa, I am undone. If you don't have that, make your calling and election sure. What does undone mean? Number one, it means not finished. Ladies, what's the first thing you do usually when you get out of bed? Besides a cup of coffee. Make up the bed, right? Why? Because it's undone. It, it's not complete. It's out of order. And so, whatever you're trusting tonight for salvation, if it didn't reveal to you by the Word of God and by the Holy Ghost that first of all, you were undone, I would desperately look at myself. You need to know that you need grace before grace is employed. You, you don't see yourself that way. You know what? This little sinner's prayer jump that goes on. And, and listen, you better look at yourself real good tonight. And if that's all you're trusting, you better look at yourself good. And I mean business because there's nothing in it. And then you look at your heart. And you know what redeemed people do? It breaks out on them like chicken pox. Everybody know what chicken pox is? I can pick it out. I look across the road and see if the child's got chicken pox. And if it didn't result in good works, if it didn't result where you had a thriving love for God, I would trust it. Right? So we find then that Isaiah had this person, this experience of seeing God and then seeing himself, and he was disgusted by what he saw within himself. We should not encourage people to feel good about themselves in sin, and that's about what we're down to, is making ourselves, uh, making folks feel good about themselves. You know what? Uh, what we need to do is make people see reality, and if it, if it upsets them a little bit, good. And if it helps them, well, that's good too. Look at me in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 23. James 1, verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word, every one of you have heard me tonight. Listen to me very carefully. Your blood is clean from my hands. For if, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So you look at yourself in the spiritual mirror. You know, from time to time, you forget about what you look like. You look like a man. I, 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 I really don't look that good. And you go away. I know. Uh, you, you know, you really made an impression on somebody. Uh, it was a woman at the hospital, one of the nurses, Monday. And she goes, Oh, man, I like your beard. When'd you grow that out? I said, Well, I've had it 20 years. <laughs> and so you can see. She probably wasn't really paying attention, right? And I think a lot of times we're the same way. We, we don't pay attention. You know what? This life is not a joke. This is the real deal. Not everything is funny. 
Not everything can be swiped away. You know what we need to do? If you want revival in October, you know what's going to happen? Is we're going to have to wipe some of that junk away and get down to the point where we mean business with God. Be serious about it. Listen, we don't have much time left. According to the scriptures, we can go out of here tonight. And we must be about our Father's business. And so we see, we see in this reading then that James is very specific. He says, we need to do something with ourselves when we see it. So if we see ourselves cold and indifferent, we need to do something. If we see ourselves lost, seek the Lord. Look in that mirror tonight. What do you see? I look in the mirror. I know the Lord saved my soul back in June of 81. When I look in the mirror, that's all I see. When I look in the mirror, as pitiful as being, I've tried to serve Him. Look in the mirror. What about your behaviors? How have you acted since God intervened? That's in your mirror. How concerned are you about eternity? What gets the bulk majority of your time? I've been really thinking heavily letting Facebook go. You know why? Because it's getting a lot of my time. A lot of my attention. And simply, I don't have it to waste. So saved people look like saved people. They spend their time on things. And I understand. Uh, I'll, I'll say two things. I understand that we have, the, we, we have the frailty of this flesh. And sometimes you just do something else. But at the same time, it should be our natural desire to love the things of God. And if you love the things of God, and if video games or Facebook or a TV show is getting in your way, the best thing you can do is let it go. And you know what? If you don't have that desire... Make your calling and election sure. Does video games mean more to you or does it cause Christ? Uh, you know what? In reality, it cannot be both ways. I don't know of a video game ministry. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Matthew 16. 16, very familiar verses of scriptures I've read time and time again. But uh, I want you to see something in it. Verse 16, Matthew 16, and Peter, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, <laughs> and he goes on to say, <laughs> Flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. So when you look at Christ, what do you see? You know why I, I despise images, supposed images of Christ? It's because they have no idea what He looked like. And I certainly don't want to see my Lord and Savior on the cross because He come down from there. He rose victorious on the third day. I don't want to see images of Him in slaughter. I don't want to see images of what people thought He might have looked like. I want to see Christ. Daily. And you know what? If you if you do that, it'll impact your life. People won't have to beg you to church. So when you look, what do you see? When 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 you think of your condition and the darkness that you may be in, where is the light? We what, what what will light you up? What will, will make you see the situation that you're in? The only thing that will is the person of Christ. If you if you remain even as you are, the only thing that will help you is Christ. This is the light. Listen, if you're lost this evening, I, I'm not trying to scare you into nothing, but it would be very wise of you to dig in this little book and look for the Lord. Pray that He might save your soul. Look for life. If you, uh, if you think you are saved, be sure. Don't, don't leave this little building tonight and sit there and wonder. Be sure you know where you stand. If you can't talk to me as your pastor, you find somebody that you can talk to. We need to be pointed to Christ. 
Not pointed to what you did. Not pointed to the sinner's prayer. But pointed to Christ. You know what? We're being very eager time to say, let me tell you what the Lord did for me. You know what? Somebody that can't give a, a sound testimony of when the Lord saved them, I worry about it. You should. Say, well, I just fumble with my words. I understand that. But if nothing else, you can say this. He saved me. And if you can't have that, if you don't understand that, make a calling and relation short tonight. Because you you may not be here Sunday. You might, you, you might be the one, well, I never would have thought that. And so make your make your call and the election short. Uh, ask the Lord God if He would to light up the darkness. That you might see yourself for who you are and where you're at. Because we desperately need that. We need to take a long, long look at self. And I found this to be true. Saved folks act like saved folks. And lost folks act like lost folks. By their fruit, you will know them. Alright, word for me to be in the night before we dismiss.